Hey guys, Blazin here. Welcome to my analysis on the M392 Bandit. Now those that played Halo Reach back in the day know what the M392 is. If you don't know what the M392 is, I'll leave a link down in the description for the full analysis I did on the original M392. With that being said, let's continue. The M392 Bandit is very similar to the original model. The Bandit variant is just a different configuration, that's all. Which means its role is meant to fulfill a different purpose. The original model made back in 2512 was made to be a DMR. However, Savine Arms, a new gun manufacturer I've never heard of before in the Halo universe, decided to take the M392 and make a new variant called Bandit. Savine Arms did not make this willy-nilly though, as they were still under supervision by Mizrai Armory the company that's pretty much responsible for a lot of UNSC weapons, including the original M392. Even though this is a different configuration, Savine Arms did slightly update the model a bit and didn't just remove the EVOS-D scope. The gun still fires in single-shot mode and still uses 762 by 51 mm ammo. The M392 is standard issue for Gao and Venezian militia units, which by the way, both Gao and Venezia are human outer colony worlds. Moving on to trademarks, they're a little different from the original model. Starting with the most interesting elite language located at the rear of the gun. This is an indicator of Sevine's work to become commonplace in the markets of former Covenant planets. Right below that are some characters which I don't know what it means. Moving a bit below that is some more information about the gun. Right above the trigger is Sevine Arms logo with more elite trademarks. Moving to the top of the gun is, I assume, a unique serial number. And finally, right above the foregrip is the Bandit logo, as well as a reminder that this gun was originally made by Mizrai Armory. The features of the M392 Bandit are very identical to the original model. The ejection port, magazine release, bolt, rails, fire selector, ammo counter, and even the side-mounted flashlight are all in the same places. The only subtle differences on this model is this button that's on both sides of the weapon. I don't know what these buttons do. If I had to guess, maybe this is a new way to disassemble the gun. I've also noticed these two buttons located in the front of the trigger. Again, I don't know what these controls do. Lastly, the barrel in the front is actually slightly shorter than the original M392. The sights on this weapon are excellent. A very clear sight picture, which is further enhanced with green fiber optic sights. Another subtle difference is the front post is actually a bit shorter than the original M392, and Sevine's logo is on the ammo counter below the numbers. The M392 Bandit still holds 15 rounds in the magazine, plus 45 extra spare rounds. The rate of fire I got was around 215 rounds per minute. Total reload speed I got was 2.2 seconds. The tactical reload speed was around 2.03 seconds. Now this is the part of the video where I tell you the gun's max effective range. Unfortunately, I can't find out the range in meters because Infinite Sniper doesn't have a meter counter anywhere in the scope. So the only thing I can tell you is that the hipfire range is about the same as the Battle Rifle, Disruptor, and Mangler. Whereas the 1.4x zoom is about the same as the Disruptor and Mangler. The M392 Bandit takes 4 shots to break shields, plus 3 shots to health, totaling a 7 shot kill. Precision. Or four shots to break shield and one shot to the head, 
totaling a five shot kill. Confirmed. The enemy is weak to bullets. Body shot TTK was around 1.67 seconds. There's more where that came from. And the headshot TTK was around 1.1 seconds. Perfect. Killing spree. So what's my final conclusion on this gun? Well, I really don't have much to say about it since this gun is still relatively new, and I'm personally not the biggest fan of Infinite's weapon sandbox as time has gone by. Usually I would give suggestions on what I'd like to see, but 343, in my opinion, balanced their guns wrong and I'm just not going to say anything. All of Halo Infinite's weapons could use adjustments, and I do min literally all of them. However, if you want to see me cover more of Halo Infinite's weapon sandbox in this style, go ahead and let me know by hitting the like button and letting me know down in the comments. Maybe hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around. I don't just cover Halo as I do like to cover other games as well. And that's really all I have to say, so until next time, peace.